In today's video, we are going to be making ourselves a shopping list app using all the skills that we have learned over the last few video tutorials about lists. Um, so as you can see on your screen right now, this is how our little app is going to look. Basically, we have the heading that says it's a shopping list and we've got seven different actions that the user can perform with this shopping list. Okay, the user simply has to type in a selection. So just say number one gets typed in and they press enter. Okay, you can see that your shopping list just here appears and then it just loops around and they can choose to do some other different actions if they would like to. Okay, so that is, in a nutshell, what we're going to be making today. I'll split it up over a couple of videos. So in this first video today, we're going to make the main menu. Okay, and from there, um, I'll come back in a second video and I'll actually add some functionality to make all the items in this menu start working. It's nothing really new to us. We've learnt all this code in previous videos, but it's nice to see how it all comes together to make a working app. Okay, so I'm going to stop that code from running. Now, one thing that you will have to do today is we're going to switch the editor we've been using. Now, we've been using this program called Mew for some time now, and it's a great um, app to use for beginners when they're learning Python. But as you start to become a bit more advanced, Okay, it's a good idea to switch over to another type of editor. Um, and the reason being is in this app today, we're going to make a little function that exits out of the program. And to do that, we need to import a library of code called the sys library. And unfortunately, mu um, can't understand that code. So you'll just get an error every time you run it and try to exit out of the program. Okay, so to get around that, what we're going to do is we're going to use another program here. Another free one, it's the official Python editor here. It's called the Python IDLE. Uh, when you open it up, it looks just something like this with a bunch of writing at the top there. All you need to do is just go to File and New and make yourself a new file. Now, if you don't have this program installed on your computer already, um, I will have another video that shows you how to download and install this app. Okay, it's just straight off the official Python website and it's free to download. Okay, so once you've got it downloaded, and installed, we are ready to start writing our app. So as I said today, we are just making the main menu. All right, so let's get started by simply printing an empty line. And then on the next line, we're going to print a, another few lines of words. So I'm going to put in three quotation marks here to say that I want my message to span across multiple lines. So I'm going to start by just making a fancy little heading. Those hashtags I'm putting in, they don't actually represent anything. It's just to make it look a bit prettier. Okay, so I've got three hashtags at the start, three at the end. On the next line, um, actually we might go down two lines here. And we'll say select a number for the action that you would like to do. Okay, and coming down two lines after that, we're going to put number one, view the shopping list. Number two, add item to shopping list. Actually, I better keep this consistent. So I have view shopping list, and on the next line, add item to shopping list. Three is remove item from shopping list. Four is check if item is on shopping list. Number five is going to be how many items on the shopping list. So we'll count how many items we have on the list. Number six is clear shopping lists. So let's remove everything from it. Number seven is simply exit. Okay, on the next line after that, just do three quotation marks and close off your bracket. Okay, so that should print our main menu onto the page for us. So let's save it and test it. So I'm just going to save that. Um, let's put in the digital tech folder. Let's call it shopping list app. And we'll give it a run. So to run your program, you've got to go up to run and press run module. Or you can press F5 for the shortcut. And you can see the app runs here in the Python shell. So we've got our heading. So select a number for the action you'd like to do. And then we've got the different options. So that's looking good so far. Just close the Python shell when you're ready. And you can go back to your code here. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the user to type in what action or the number of the action that they would like to perform. 
So we need to do an input statement. So I'm going to write input and in quotation marks, oh, sorry, in brackets and quotation marks, we'll just say make your selection. Close the quote, actually put a colon, space, quotation marks and bracket to close that off. Now the user will be able to make a selection. So they type in whichever number action they would like to perform. Now we need the computer to remember which number they select. So we need to assign a variable at the start of this input line. So let's give it a meaningful name like selection and write equals after that. So selection will equal whatever the user types in as their selection. Okay, let's um, control S to save it, F5 to run it, and you can see now we can make a selection. So if we press 1, nothing else happens, but it is storing that 1 in the selection variable. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some if, elif, and else statements here to determine our course of action for when the user presses each of these buttons. So let's start with if selection equals equals, and then in quotation marks, one. We'll put a colon at the end. Okay, and I'm just going to write the word pass. So let me explain what's happening here. We've written if selection, so this variable just up here on this line here, oops, on this line above us, if the selection that the user makes is equal to 1. Remember, we're not doing a mathematical equation here, so we have to put two equal signs. All right, so if their selection equals 1, which is view the shopping list, we're going to write our code in here in a second video. Okay, but for now, we're just going to put the word pass. What pass does is basically lets the computer accept that, um, as an input there and it won't cause an error when we run the app. So I'll just show you, I'll just save it and run it. And when I press number one, it just ends the program like usual without causing an error. Okay, so that's good. Then we just need to do a few L if statements. So L if just means else if. So that means what else? If they make another selection besides the number one, what else are we going to do? So we need to say L if selection equals 2, colon, go down the next line and write pass again. Now we're going to do this for quite a few of these um, numbers. So you might as well co start copying and pasting. So just change the number at the end. So 2, we'll turn to 3, 4, 5, 6. And oops, the last one is a 7. Now the last one doesn't need to be an L if, okay? So actually no, we will leave it as that. I've got another idea. What we're going to do on the last line, we're going to write else. So what else happens if we don't press one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? That means we've selected an option that's not there. So we've typed in the wrong value. So we might tell the user, so we'll print them a message saying, you did not make a valid selection. Okay, so if the user types in anything except for these seven numbers, then they'll get that error message. And we'll just get them to type in again um, what their selection is going to be. All right, so that should be looking good. Let me just save that. Um, we won't worry about testing it. Actually, we could probably test this last item. Let's see what happens. So let's say we type in an 8, because we don't have 8 options. Let's type in 8. It says you did not make a valid selection. So that's a bit of error checking done for us there. Um, what's something else we can do now? I guess before we go to the next video, there's a few things we could do. Um, let's create the shopping list. All right, so let's make a variable called underscore shopping list, just like we did in previous videos. And we'll add a few items to it. Now remember when we make a list, we use square brackets to open up the list, and then everything that goes inside the square brackets needs to be in quotation marks. So let's add apples, put a comma, bananas, comma, oops, carrots, and we'll put potatoes this time as well. Don't forget to close off your square brackets at the end. Okay, so that has made a list for us. So that's what we've got sitting on our shopping list at the moment. Um, the last thing that I guess we could do right now is simply code up selection number seven, which is the exit 
from the program. So how to quit the program. So we're going to do something new here. It's not hard by any means, but I'll just show you something new. What we're going to do at the very top of our code, so go back to line number one at the very start, and I want you to write in import sys. That imports the sys library. I think it stands for system, I'm not too sure, but anyway, it imports the sys library, and inside of that sys library, so it's a library of code that somebody else has written for us, there is a function called exit. Okay, and that will pretty much exit out of the program for us. So what we do down here where it says lf selection equals 7, instead of passing, what we're going to do is we're going to write sys.exit, bracket, bracket. And that simply says we're going to access the sys library of code, and inside of that we're going to access the exit function. Okay, and it will run the exit function and allow us to exit out of our program. Not sure if that's going to work, but let's give it a test run. So if we type in 7, yep, it exited our program. So that's working well. Um, what else can we do? I think that's all that we need to do for now. All right. In the next video, what we're going to do, we're going to come back and we're going to start coding up each of these different selections. Okay, so we're going to get functionality into each of these. Okay, so I'll catch you in that next video.